qualifications. Um, Carol needs no um, introduction. I'm sure you all know Carol. Um, Carol's going to give us a sort of general update on the Caribbean. Um, we've got Ian from the Bahamas. Um, give us a wave, Ian. <laughs> we've got Carolyn from Anguilla. Give us a wave, Carolyn. And we've got Stephen from Tobago that's hiding in a corner at the moment. Give us a wave. Excellent. <laughs> um, also, um, we've got as well, um, Carolyn has kindly um, donated a prize, which is some champagne and chocolates um, that she's going to send out. So at the end of the presentations, we'll do, I'll try and do a spin the wheel live. Um, we might have a technical difficulty with this because it'll be the first time I've done it. So if we do, I'll go onto Facebook afterwards and do it live there. Um, but yeah, so at the end of the presentation, one of you that's in the room, and you've got to be in the room um, to win it. If you're not in the room, it'll go, we'll pick somebody else and we'll do a spin the, spin the wheel again. So um, yeah, without much ado, Carol, please, um, if we can hand over to you to sort of tell us all about your updates. All right, I'll just um, share my screen just a moment. Can everyone see my presentation? Yes. yes. Oh, great, great. It worked. <laughs> All right. Well, hi, everyone. It's good to be here. Now, um, this is the presentation I made last week, but I understand that some persons would not ha yet have seen it and some might. So bear with me. But we do feel that because, of, you know, we've got the other experts here to talk about their individual destinations, that it is good just to do a quicker overview and to really to see, well, what's next for the Caribbean and this whole business of tourism. So if we just have a quick review of 2019, it, it turned out to be a good year for the Caribbean. Our stay over arrivals grew by 4.4%. So we welcomed um, 31.5 million um, stay over guests. And it was anticipated that global tourism would grow by about 3.8%. So the Caribbean was above the curve. And for the cruise industry, we also welcomed across the region over 30 million visitors, and that represented um, the seventh year of growth. So generally, things weren't looking too bad for the Caribbean when we closed out 2019. If we look down just quickly at some of the key markets for the Caribbean, um, the US was the best performing market. That market grew by 10%. The Canadian um, market basically remained pretty static and that just had a marginal increase of 0.4%. Intra-Caribbean travel, that increased by 7.4%. But um, And South America did, did show quite a decline. Now let's have a quick look closer to home. The European market dipped by 1.4%. So that was from... Um, 5.9 million in 2018 to 5.8 million and the UK market that was down by 5.6 percent so we welcomed about 1.3 million UK visitors in the Caribbean and we all know that the biggest impact for that would have of course have been Brexit um, that created a lot of uncertainty in the market and people were a bit reluctant to make big expenditures and then they were hearing about passports and visas and a number of issues so so that's how we closed out um, 2019 in terms of figures. So I've just got to do something to my screen that no one, that you folks can't see, but um, it just helps me one sec. Right, done it. Um, so what, what were we expecting for 2020? Well, looking at 2020, we thought that, um, oops, just give me a second. Right, sorry, but my screen went a bit funny there. Right, so what we we predicting for 2020? Well, first of all, we estimated that growth would be about 1.2%. We knew that some of the things that we would be facing in the in the region, we were expecting some environmental issues, climate change, sargassum, we still haven't come up with a solution for that yet. So we felt that that may be on some of our coastlines being tropical. There's always the risk of mosquito borne diseases. We were um, aware of some of the unrest in Haiti, Venezuela, also aware of US restrictions. And then we thought to ourselves, well, we may face some social issues. There may be a bit of crime. We're We've got to keep looking at education, employment, entrepreneurship, the underground economy. But even with those challenges in place, we were expecting a good tourism season. 
And then, of course, we woke up to the news of COVID-19. And at first, it all seemed quite far away from us, really. And we were watching the news. We're thinking, yes, we'll keep our eye on that. But as I said before, the deal breaker for many of us was ITB Berlin. We were packed to go. We were paid up. We were ready. And then once ITB got cancelled, we realised in the industry, certainly over here, that things were starting to get real. We saw the impact on our airlines, the cruise lines, our travel partners started to um, tell us about um, cancellations, people wanting refunds. We started to feel the impact in the Caribbean with our hotels, guest houses, villas. It started to reach commerce in the Caribbean, schools were closing, etc. And all of a sudden, we found ourselves really by um, mid-March in a full-blown crisis and all the roles have totally switched now. What was important to us in our industry is no longer important and instead we're looking at a lot of the uh, more auxiliary roles to really um, take a lead position now and tourism has really taken a global backbench. So with all of what's happening for us, you know, how, what are we going to do as a region? How are we really going to move forward? So we've been having lots of discussions and webinars, etc. and I'm sure everyone has. And not only in the Caribbean, but across the globe, domestic tourism will recover first. And, and that's simply because um, once um, countries open up, borders are not necessarily going to open up and people will want to get out. And certainly for the Caribbean, domestic tourism will cover first. And also there's going to be a great opportunity for the Caribbean. My sector won't necessarily impact us in this market, but it will allow the region to start to recover and that will impact us. There's also a gut feeling as well that the yacht sector, the yachting sector will recover before the cruise industry. And we've seen that in the past where we've had hurricanes where the yachting sector was able to recover and mobilize a lot quickly. There have been great debates, which I'm sure some of you have seen as well, about the cruise industry. Will they recover? Won't they recover? Will people start um, cruising quickly? But I think it's going to it's going to be fair to say that the cruise industry will take longer to return. And um, one of the things I've learned in dealing with some of the cruise companies during this crisis is that there's definitely going to be a need for the cruise companies to have a, to strengthen their relationships with the land side of the destination and also to be held accountable for environmental impact because we've seen now the importance of the cruise companies working more closely with the destinations, particularly when they were um, stranded and really needed some support. National tourism organizations will be called upon to deliver greater results in the face of massive budget cuts. I've, I've, I've spoken to a few of the ministers and I've said, you know, what's going to happen with us? What's going to happen, you know, for tourist boards and how we work together? And it's no secrets that budget will be cut, but the tourist boards, and we've got some here today, are going to be asked to deliver so much more. There's going to be a lot of pressure on them and, and, uh, and us as an organisation. But that's where a lot of the credibility is going to come from. And, that, and those are the people who really know the product and, and will know what's happening. So it's going to be really important to work very closely with the tourist board. And of course, we've got to strengthen partnerships. So of course, now people are going to say, well, you know, looking at the Caribbean product, how are you going to move this forward? And this is important for the trade in the UK and all across the world, because your clients are going to be asking you a lot more questions before they make those bookings. They're going to want answers. And we know that security, hygiene, health and safety will top the list. Even if people, you know, looked at it from a, from a, from a cursory perspective, now they are serious. R star ratings, health ratings, standards, certification, all of these things are going to count because people want to ensure that they are going to destinations and resorts that can take care of them. Sustainability. Travellers are going to have a higher level of conscience. I joke that my best friends now are the magpies and the robins in my garden because I'm not seeing many humans but I'm seeing the birds every day and I'm looking up like everywhere else, everyone else and thinking wow isn't the sky blue doesn't the air feel different and the visitors to our destinations they are feeling the same way they're seeing what we're seeing so sustainability and taking care of the environment is going to mean so much more to people health wellness and fitness 
those are they're no longer buzzwords or just things to do on holiday it's a part of life now we've all realized particularly with COVID-19 the importance of building up our immune systems being physically stronger mental stronger and people want these experiences when they go away low season travels now um, you've got other experts who are going to speak after me but it, we feel strongly many of us that for us that tourism is really going to pick up probably October November December we're hoping to have very high occupancies all things being equal October November December but what it means is that going into 20 21, we're not going to be talking too much about low seasons and closing because we're going to have a lot of ground to try and recover from 2020. So we're going to be encouraging people to travel in the low season and the destinations to ensure that right across the year we have some level of activity engagement for visitors. There's going to be a higher demand for more personalised service. People want to know that we all care. And also authenticity, exploration, engagement, transformational experiences. Right now, people at home ticking off their bucket lists. And we've got to ensure that all the things that people think like, do you know what, I'm going to do it now. We deliver. We help people to really have those wonderful experiences in the Caribbean that mean so much to them. Now, looking at our whole com competition and competitive positioning, one of the things I really don't like are price wars, and I hope we don't get into one. But the reality is that it is going to be a buyer's market when we open up, because so many of us are going to be trying to recover in this tourism industry, and therefore people will shop around. So we've got to work with our agents to ensure that we've got some fantastic offers and tacticals in the market so that the Caribbean is able to compete. Now, we know that the largest market to the Caribbean, that's the USA, it's likely that they're going to take a bit longer to recover than, than other parts. Um, but when we look at our market, UK and Europe, we know that for sure we're going to get a lot of competition from the Mediterranean and the Middle East. They're going to have some great deals and offers out there. But for people who are thinking, actually, I'm feeling adventurous, I want to go a bit further, the Caribbean will be there for them and, and we're going to be there trying to attract them. We also know that we're going to have a lot of competition from domestic tourism in the UK for the rest of this year. A lot of people I know have said, I'm not sure if I'm going to be confident to travel overseas, but I think I'll go to Ireland, Scotland, Jersey, Guernsey, Cornwall. So there's going to be a lot of domestic tourism for us as well in terms of competition. But hopefully the position will change in 2021 and we're going to be there to work with you. And also for the Caribbean, we, we've got to be looking at new markets as well, particularly if the main market for us collapses or takes longer to recover. So we're also going to be looking at um, other segments, the my segments, wedding and honeymoon, health and wellness. You know, there's so many things that we need to look at. And we're going to be working very hard with the Caribbean suppliers. And I know that our destinations, they'll be working hard. Sorry, um, our NTOs here, they're going to be working hard and giving great advice to the Caribbean about they just need to build greater engagement. And one of the things we're all going to need to do, I often hear trade shows are dead. We don't want to go to trade shows again. But given just how much market opportunity we have lost this year i think that for the final quarter of of 2020 and going into 2021 many of us are going to be all trade showed out but we will need to be there building new relations for the caribbean established relationships we hope to start with wtm and, and, and just go right through for the year, going to as many shows as possible with our, with our um, tourist board partners and hotel partners, because we've got to get the Caribbean on the map and we can't do it without the trade. So we look forward to working with you. So what's our tone? Because we are out there doing lots of things right now for the Caribbean. Um, so, well, you know, the reality is it's a hard time for the world. People are dying. And each time we turn on and we listen to the news, we hear more about lives that have been lost, essential services, the workers, the NHS. So tone is so important. So as a Caribbean region right now, we have a soft sell approach. For us, it's about informing, sharing, reassuring, nurturing. And we're openly saying to everyone, stay in, stay home. We're not going anywhere. The Caribbean will be right here waiting for you. And that's the tone 
phone that we're using in our social media right now. And um, what we're doing is reminding customers, the trade consumers, what's available. And when the time is right, please join us in the Caribbean. Our, our social media campaign is Caribbean Dreaming, and we encourage all our destinations, everyone, even the trade, get up there, post your favorite pictures, and always use the hashtag Caribbean Dreaming, because it makes it much easier for us to repost your work and support as well. And we're saying flood the channels with comforting, feel-good messages. And one of the messages we like right now is the one that Nike has out there, not a travel message, but it says, if you ever dreamed of playing for millions around the world, now is your chance. Play inside, play for the world. And it's simply that, stay in, support the world. That's what we're saying to everyone. So we've, we've launched um, Caribbean Dreaming. Do, do follow us on Twitter, Instagram, um, go, go on our Facebook page, go on our website. And also um, on our website, we're running a consumer competition right now we've got um, a holiday to blue waters we're going to have lots of other prizes to put up there from our member countries so please to the agents direct your your clients to our website um, caribbean.co.uk and encourage them to enter that competition it's real it's free we're putting up prizes every two weeks because and the prizes are valid until 2021 as well because we want to offer that warmth to people if we can and of course course we'll get support later from our destinations and everyone who are also going to have some great offers out there when the time is right so the reality for us is that it could take months even years before consumers feel 100 percent to travel long all long haul and according to the silver travel advisor um the average age of the Caribbean visitor is higher than other parts of the world. And that's true. Our average age is, is well over 45. And if you think that it's people 45, 55, 60, you know, over the 55, 65 age group, 75, 80, you know, they've been the ones to have been told, stay in, don't do this, don't do that. So it's going to take a bit for, for certainly people who tend to go to the Caribbean because they've got that level of disposable income to get that confidence up. But we are going to be working with you and with them. The Caribbean will need to reposition to increase market share from other segments and the product must adapt to manage global health challenges. So just looking forward, the Caribbean is going to be looking at inward investment, rebuilding the infrastructure. And we're going to be looking at also working with, with the diaspora tourism, you know, uh, um, the, the media, the bloggers, the influences. We're, we're using a lot more technology we believe in the caribbean that we should train homegrown talent so that we have people who are continually passionate about the tourism industry and we're going to be working really hard to ensure that the caribbean is sustainable not only for the travel trade across the world not only for the visitors but for the caribbean people as well in all that we're doing if we don't work to keep the people who work in the industry healthy then they're going to be challenged they won't be able to provide the level of care and service that is needed so that's my presentation um, our social media contacts are there follow us support us my colleagues who will speak afterwards have some great information about their destinations and we look forward to welcoming you all to the caribbean so thank you very much Thank you very much, Carol. You've had a lot of um, messages that have come through on chat just saying great information, great presentation. So thank you. We really do appreciate you coming on, you know, coming along and sort of advising us what the situation is and what's happening. So thank you very much. And we will let you go now because we know that you're a very busy lady. Um, well, yeah. yeah, I've got yeah, about four other about calls this afternoon. I'm, I must share. We checked recently and since we've been working from home, we've done over 300 um, Zoom meetings. So it's wow. a tad busy. But anyway, thank you. Have a great session. And to my colleagues as well um, from the Caribbean, you know, Ian, Carolyn, Stephen, have a great afternoon. Thank you all. Take care. Thank you, Carol. Thank you. Thanks. Bye bye. Okay, just before um, we hand over to Ian um, to tell us all about the Bahamas, um, I've just got a quick poll question um, just to see who's, who's still here. <laughs> just. Uh, out of interest, what year are you making bookings for at the moment? Is it 2020, 2021, or not making bookings at all? If you can all go and answer for us, and um, I'll announce the poll in a moment. Got 
74% of people have voted at the moment, up to 80. Okay, 82%, I'm gonna end it now. Um, okay, so we've got, oh no, 14%. 2021 bookings are 42% and not making bookings are 44%. Um, but this will probably be because um, quite a few of, of the team that are on here will be furloughed. So again, at the, mo the moment that everybody gets back to work, these figures will change, but this is how it stands at this moment in time. So thank you very much for that. Um, so, Ian, um, if I can hand over to you, you're currently on mute, so you'll need to unmute yourself. Um, and if you wouldn't mind sharing your screen and um, telling us all about the amazing Bahamas. Sure. Thank you very much for having me. So, sharing your screen. Okay. Can you all see the screen? Yes. Okay. There we go. So I'm Ian Rogers. I work for the Bahamas Tourist Office uh, here in London. And I'm going to give you a brief introduction to my home of the islands of the Bahamas. We've got a little video. Hopefully the sound will work. So that was our ad campaign from last year. I think we're all wanting to fly away at the moment. Um, hopefully it'll happen sooner than uh, we think. So with the Bahamas, as you can see, we have many islands. A lot of people think that we're only in Nassau, uh, but we actually have 16 main islands with over 2,500 islands and keys. Our capital is Nassau. That's where you can get a direct flight from London with British Airways. You can also go through uh, North America with numerous uh, cities that do nonstop flights into the Bahamas from New York or uh, Atlanta, Chicago, and the most popular being Florida. Florida is eight kilometers off the coast of the Bahamas. Um, so flying from uh, Florida to the Bahamas is about a 35 minute flight, very common to do that. Twin centering is very popular as well. A week in New York, a week in Nassau, a week in Miami, a week in the Exumas is very popular. But once you're in the Bahamas, we do recommend doing island hopping. So you might start off in Nassau or the capital, do a week there, do a day trip over to Eleuthera, and then do maybe five or six days in the Exumas. Uh, just as long as you do two, two or three islands, just see um, the different sides of the Bahamas. Our currency is the Bahamian dollar. We accept both the Bahamian and the American dollar. They're on par. And also our language is English, as you can tell from my accent. So going into the capital of Nassau and Paradise Island, this island is kind of um, divided in three different sections. You have Cable Beach, which a lot of the hotels are in. You have downtown Nassau, which is city center. And then you have Paradise Island, which is connected by two bridges off the coast of the main island. Um, so this is our biggest um, city. So it has a lot of duty-free shopping, store market, which you can get a lot of um, handmade Bahamian arts and crafts, souvenirs. We have two casinos, um, Atlantis and Bahamar. Lots of opportunities for restaurants, dining, bar hopping, but also you get the historical and cultural aspects of uh, the Bahamas available there as well, of museums, excursions, and the big activities, diving, fishing, boating, and golfing. So some of the main activities and excursions you can do was in Nassau. One of my favorite ones is True Bahamian Food Tours. This is a food tour uh, that takes you around downtown Nassau and it gives you history of our cuisine and also a little taste of different restaurants. It's a good um, tour to do at the beginning of your holiday so you know where to go to uh, later on if you want full meals of the, from the restaurants. We're very good and uh, famous for our diving from um, underwater sculpture parks, uh, wrecks, walls, blue holes, um, shark interactions. If you want Bahamian cuisine, 
um, we recommend going to Arawak Key. This is what Bahamians call, we call a uh, fish fry, and it's happened on every single island. And it's a collection of restaurants and bars um, where you can get local Bahamian meals. And it's great to go on to like a Friday or Saturday night with live music and a band. Um, and it's also where we go for our food. So you can mix with the Bahamians once you're there as well. Um, some more activities. One of the most popular ones and the most important ones is People of People, which is a free program that pairs up tours with our local Bahamian ambassadors. And here's a little video on that. I think what people are looking for more so now in a travel experience is to actually share in the country that they're visiting. Whenever you invite people into your home, it says a lot. We as a people, we do it regularly. It's usual for us. Well, the People to People program is intended to put locals together with visitors. You're meeting somebody face to face. You, you include the visitor in your life, in the things you would normally do. What it allows them to do is to really be able to share and, and get a better perspective of what it's like. Food, you know, that's always the main part of any Bahamian get-together. I say Bahamians love any excuse for a party. <laughs> I think that relationships are built, even in that short space of time, you build a relationship with the people that, that you get to meet and speak with. I think eating with someone is always, always very, very powerful. If we did not have the People to People program, I shudder to think of the number of tourists who would come here and get perhaps a shallow experience. So yeah, that's our People to People program. It's a free program. You sign up online, Bahamas.com, and it pairs tours with the local Bahamian ambassadors based on interests and hobbies. So if you have clients who are interested in scuba diving, they'll pair up um, with Bahamian ambassadors who have the same interests, and they'll either invite you into their own home for a traditional made Bahamian meal, or they might take you out to do um, go scuba diving or snorkeling with them. So it's pretty much a free experience um, hosted by Bahamians. They'll pick you up from the hotel, drop you off as well. So it's a great way to have a cultural exchange whilst you're on destination. Some other experiences as National Art Gallery showcasing a lot of Bahamian art and uh, crafts, rum factories, museums, golf, um, interaction with wildlife in the Bahamas. One of our other islands, Freeport, this is our second city known for uh, ecotourism. So a lot of birding done there, diving, uh, kayak tours, uh, city tours as well. You can get there either via NASA or there's flights in from uh, Florida and also cruises as well. So with the Bahamas, we're kind of divided into two different sections because we have so many islands. Um, you have the city islands of Nassau, Paris Island, and Freeport, and then you have all the other islands which are considered the out islands. These are more laid back, more quiet, a bit more boutique style hotels and restaurants, accommodations, and it's a, a very clear difference between the two sets of islands. The most famous at the moment probably are the Exumas. Uh, I always say to people when they picture the Bahamas in their head, uh, they're usually picturing the Exumas, just because they are so well known for their beautiful waters, there are miles and miles of um, beautiful white sand beaches and just dotted um, islands and keys in a beautiful chain there. But obviously probably the most famous um, residents of these islands are the swimming pigs. Uh, people come from all over the world still to go and visit them. You can do a day trip from Nassau, which has this experience um, included in it. And it's a boat trip from Nassau that uh, kind of island hops up and down this chain Stopping out different destinations. Some have the swimming pigs. Another one is an underwater cave, um, Thunderbolt Grotto, made uh, famous from James Bond. And so it's a whole day experience in the Exumas. My recommendation is to go there for at least two, three, or four days because it's an amazing experience in itself, just being on these islands. You can fly there also from Florida or uh, from Nassau. Another island group, this is my favorite because this is where I grew up, Eleutheran Harbor Island, uh, very famous for its pink sand beaches and also the glass window bridge. If you can see from the picture up there, there's a bridge that kind of divides the island in half. On one side of it, you have the deep blue of the Atlantic Ocean and the other side, you have the calm and turquoise of what we call the Caribbean Sea. 
there's one main road that goes up and down there and you kind of see both sides of the ocean are uh, very beautiful. It's more relaxed, laid back kind of island. People who are looking for peace and relaxation will go to this island, but you don't get bored there because there's enough activity to um, keep you occupied from diving. Um, there's caves there, there's pineapple fields you can take tours of, and there's flights in from Atlanta, uh, Fort Lauderdale, Miami, and um, Nassau, and a ferry from there as well. So we have a lot of islands in the Bahamas. I can't go through all of them in a 10 minute presentation, but I do encourage you to go and do your own research and see how different all they are from each other and what unique experiences you can have on each of the different islands. One experience you can have on all the islands is junk canoe. This happens uh, once a year at Christmas time and it's an expression of our culture and heritage. Uh, it starts at about 10 p.m. at night, it finishes about six, seven, eight in the morning. So it's a whole night of dancing in the streets, big costumes, marching band, dancers, and it's a big competition for groups to um, compete against each other. Obviously, wedding the honeymoons are very popular as well. Everything from church weddings, beach weddings, incorporating junk canoe into your nuptials, underwater nuptials, that's your thing, or having a wedding on one island and a honeymoon on another island. So there's lots of opportunities for that kind of thing there. Uh, one last thing is our new message from the Bahamas to everyone else. At times like these, we're all reminded that storms come and storms go. And what matters the most is that we come together as one. You were there for us, and when the storm passes, we will be here for you. So thank you very much for listening in on my little talk there. We also have an online training course, Bahamac, if you want um, to do a bit more training on the Bahamas or contact me. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Ian. Um, wow, so much that I've just learned in that one presentation. So thank you very much. We've got a couple of questions, but I'm going to ask them um, towards the end once we've got everything gathered together. Um, but from my point of view, the, the people to people was just, wow, it was just amazing. Like to be able to go and live as a bohemian person is just mm -hmm. incredible and to mingle. It's all about, this is the experience that people are wanting um, and certainly something that we can really share in our social media pages and you know really push to the consumers. Um, yeah. Also, you've got some amazing videos. Um, so if possible, um, could you email me the link so that I can send them out to everybody? Um, of course. Just so that we've got all of those. Mm -hmm. um, so perfect, thank you. Thank you very, very much. Um, Carolyn, um, if I can hand over to you now, please, if you can share your screen and tell us all about the um, amazing Angela. Everyone seeing that? Hi, good afternoon everybody and thank you for the opportunity to share a little bit of um, one of the smaller islands in the Caribbean, the little British overseas territory of Anguilla. Um, I'm going to, I don't have all those lovely videos that Ian had but I've got some great images and lots of good information that I hope will be able to um, inspire you when things get back to a little bit normal. Uh, to your clients. Anyway, as I said, Anguilla is a British overseas territory. Uh, we are part of the Leeward Islands. Uh, so our closest neighbours would be St. Martin, St. Bart's, Antigua Barbuda and the British Virgin Islands. And the island itself, as you can see in the image up on the top right hand corner, it's very long and narrow. It's 36 square miles, so it's 3 by 16. So it's one of the tiniest little islands in the Caribbean. Population of roughly about 14 and a half thousand people. Um, getting to Anguilla is uh, a lot easier than people think actually. We have very good services normally uh, with KLM and Air France into Saint Martin, and we also have British Airways and Virgin Atlantic going into Antigua. If you're coming across from Antigua, uh, you have the option of a scheduled service with Trans Anguilla Airways, which is our local carrier. Um, and they operate a, a roughly seven to nine seater aircraft. Um, it's a daily service. It goes out of Antigua at 5 p.m. in the afternoon. So under normal circumstances, it meets the international flights coming in and it will then take 40 minutes to get across to Anguilla. So your clients can actually be in Anguilla by about 6 p.m. in the evening. 
Uh, we have offer charter services as well with Anguilla Air Services and also Trade Wind Aviation. Um, if you're coming into St. Martin with KLM and Air France, the Dutch side of St. Martin has the airport and the cruise ship port. And the Anguilla government actually now, have, well, not now, it's not new, it's probably about five years old now, is um, a fantastic state of the art dock. So your clients are met in the terminal at the airport and they're taken straight across to the dock, which is about a two minute journey from the airport. And it's about a 25 minute boat ride to Anguilla's port um, for arrivals or main port, which is Blowing Point. Um, and from there, your clients are met by either their hotel reps or their um, ground handlers, whoever they've organised to meet them and take them to their property. The French side of the uh, St. Martin actually has the local ferry. I call this the local bus service. It basically operates between Anguilla and again, Blowing Point um, every 45 minutes back and forth. And that operates from about 7 p.m. in the evening. To be honest though, I always say people are coming into St. Martin um, and they're, they're flying in, it's easier to go from the airport rather than take a taxi across to, um, to Marigold on the French side. Um, it adds up to basically the same as going from the airport door. And Willow really, as I said before, is one of the smaller islands, but it still has an awful lot to offer. Um, our five-star resorts are quite spectacular. And I've just put some images in here just to give you an understanding. As you can see, this image actually shows you how very flat Anguilla is. Our sister islands, you can see St. Martin in the background on the right top right hand corner, you know, is quite mountainous as is St. Kitts and Nevis um, and the BVI and St. Bart's. But Anguilla is completely flat and actually that gives us these most extraordinary powder white beaches. Um, but we're looking at the Four Seasons here, which is the largest property you'll find on Anguilla Resort property. And looking now at just again at the very front view here, which is 36 of what they call their three to five bedroom residence. It, it's over two bays, Barnes Bay where the residents are, and this is the beginning of Mead's Bay, one of our beautiful beaches on the island. All the beaches in Anguilla too are public. We don't have any private beaches. So I showed you at the beginning, at the top right hand corner, you'll have um, the Four Seasons, and this is coming down Mead's Bay, and then down onto a, a Burj Resort, which is Malihana's property. And some of our smaller little properties dot along in this image here. Malihana, as I said, is a Burj resort. Again, 70 suites now. They've just added a few more. They've opened up their beachfront facilities. Um, again, a, a totally different property. All the properties on Anguilla are very, very different. And, I, and really, as I said, the, the Four Seasons is the largest. Most of them are very small number um, suites and villas. Belmont Capture Luca. Beautiful Mordes Bay, I keep saying beautiful because the beaches are quite beautiful. They, um, you know, they're all powder white. We don't have any black beaches. They're all sand um, and they're, you know, quite special. A lot of our properties too have had refurbishments post Irma in uh, 2017. So, you know, the island is looking absolutely magnificent. Um, at the moment, like everybody, we're shut, but, you know, it has been doing very, very well. And we look forward to welcoming people back again. Uh, Zemi Beach House is at the east end of the island. This is now part of um, Hilton Lux brand, one of their three properties that they've launched under this branding. Um, it's the only five-star resort you'll find at the east end of the island, but there is a great portfolio of small properties and villas as well. At Kuznark Golf Resort and Spa, Rendezvous Bay, and again, you can see the mountains of, of um, St. Martin in the distance, just shows you how close we are to St. Martin. And actually, one thing I didn't mention as well is that if you actually want to fly from St. Martin to Anguilla at six minutes, it's probably one of the shortest flights in the world. A great outlook from all of the properties. They're all, uh, you know, right on the beach. Uh, the uh, reef at Merrywing Bay, it's part of the, it's the second property in the Cruise Night Resort portfolio. And Quintessence, this is part of Roland Chateau. And that at the present, they only offer nine suites within the within this large, beautiful um, property here. I say large, nine suites, but the villas of Anguilla, again, we have everything from really small, affordable properties right up to um, what we call our mega villas, quite extraordinary, but uh, you know, a great cross section. I was out in December last year with some villa tour operators and we actually made a point of looking at only new properties and on the, on the affordable side, you know, and I think as we're going through um, changes in the tourism industry, you know, where you're seeing 
um, people are probably cautious when it comes to borders opening up. I think the villa market is actually going to be one to watch. And some of our properties are on island low season, you know, like 1,750 a night for three to five bedrooms. So if you've got multi-generational families traveling that still want to get away, but maybe don't want to resort, I really do think the villas, not just in Angola, but globally will be things that, you know, particularly in the Caribbean that people will, re I think will actually take up more so than before. Our smaller properties such as Karama, again, still on beautiful stretches of beach, um, again, very affordable, they're self-contained. Um, you know, properties like this start one bedroom, one bathroom, $175 a night. So when you think you've got four seasons on one side, a verge on the other, you've got a great affordable choice right in the middle still on, you know, stunning piece of beach. Um, Manoa and Frangipani, again, we don't have a lot of four star, um, but the, we have two main properties um, that come under that sort of star rating. But our beaches are one of our key selling points. As I mentioned, Zemi Beach House at the far um, end of this picture here, Shell Bay East, beautiful little secluded bays. This is called Little Bay. Um, we have six offshore keys on Anguilla, little islands that just have uh, three of them having little shacks that you can go and have lunch, um, snorkel, just relax. We have so much more to offer guests as well now. Um, you know, we've realized in the past that you know, Anguilla was very much seen as beach and food, um, and but there was so much going on that we've really worked hard now to get our um, our industry partners to really get out there and promote their products. We have a lot of the festivals throughout the year. Our summer carnival is um, in normally in August every year. Uh, we have Festival del Mer in uh, Easter. We have Moon Splash in March. There's so much going on on the island that you know it really can keep. You know, keep you occupied right throughout the year with things to do. Sailing is the national sport of the island. Hiking as well. The east end of the island is very um, untouched, very uh, natural. We have a lot of walking um, tours on option. The National Trust of Anguilla also offers, offers fantastic walking tours, as well as independent guides that can take people around and explore some really um, interesting parts of the island. As also the offshore keys, because they're deserted, one of them is actually a nature reserve as well. You can kayak around the shores, kite surf is huge. Liquid Glow do night kayaking tours around the shoreline. Um, and as I mentioned, the offshore keys. This is a little sandy island. It's a tiny dot. You can walk around in about three minutes. Um, it's changed a lot from this picture because after Hurricane Irma, it was actually gone, but they've rebuilt now. And this is a great place to come on Sunday just to hang out. Golf, we have an 18-hole Greg Norman PGA standard golf course, part of Kuzma Golf Resorts and Spa. Absolutely fantastic. We had Nick Felder playing here one day before Christmas. He said probably one of the great, one of the best courses he played on in many years. So that was a great um, accolade for us. And farm wellness, like everywhere, it's very much part of the mix. You can have yoga on the beach. You can go to one of our beautiful spas. We also have fantastic, this lady actually does massages in the waters. Uh, which is absolutely beautiful. Um, very much as Ian was saying, you know, the, the romance, the wedding and honeymoon market is very big for Anguilla. Like anywhere in the Caribbean, you have to have um, lodge your papers, obviously with the town hall, but you can get married anywhere. This is Anguilla's arch. Um, and also, as I said, wherever your clients be at a church, under a palm tree, on one of our offshore keys, there's many options available to them. Food is a huge draw card for Angola. We have over 120 dining options. When you think of a little island of, you know, 35 square miles, it's quite extraordinary. And that can be anything from small little beachside dining to fantastic um, fine dining experiences. We now have two companies that do little deliveries around the island. So if your clients want to stay within their property or their villa and have somebody bring their, food, their meal to them, they can have that. We have incredible chefs that work um, with all the villa properties as well. So, you know, food is a really big part of the whole day. And not just the visitors. Anguillians eat out as much as visitors. If anybody's watching um, the Great British Menu at the moment, we have the fantastic Perth Gums. He's Anguillian actually in the finals coming up. He's the head chef at Orma in London. So keep an eye out for him. He's doing very, very well. We're very proud. Um, and there's always a little cheeky rum punch at the end of the day. Uh, the island, as I said, it's not mass tourism. It's tiny. It's 35 square miles. It's 14 and a half thousand people. No all-inclusive. Very welcoming. Very friendly. 
And I just think one of those gems, very special place. If you've got clients you think that could work for them, that you're not sure if they would do and you know come to Anguilla for the entire stay, you know it's a very good combination with Antigua, with St Bart's. We're 15 minutes away from St Bart's by air, and also St Kitts and Nevis is only 20 minutes away. So again, think of it as an option um, when the market gets back on track. If they're coming on a cruise and finishing in St Martin, it's also a nice opportunity to actually spend some time actually on island, come across from St Martin and stay on the, the island itself. So that's a little bit about um, Anguilla. This is how you can find us. I also have a Travel Uni page if anybody wants to do some, um, learn a little bit more. And we're updating that at the moment as we have time. Um, thank you very, very much for the opportunity, um, Sarah, to be on here. And very happy to answer any questions at the end of the session. Thank you. I think we've had a couple of questions coming in for you. So yeah, we'll look forward to doing those in a moment. Um, Thank you, Carolyn, that was great. Um, you said something about being in Anguilla by about six o'clock, I am there. And then I look at the amazing food and the beautiful hotels and wow, those beaches. So yes, please, at 6 p.m., I'm there. So please take me. <laughs> so thank you very, very much. It was, it was great to hear all about, all about the fantastic play, the island. Um, Stephen, um, we can't see you, but are you, are you ready, please, to share your screen and tell us all about the fantastic Tobago? Hello there. Hello, everyone. Um, yes, I am. I am available. I am available. I'm just about to share the screen now. I hope you can all hear me and you can all see the screen. Yep, that's all great. Wonderful. Okie dokie. Um, one thing before I start um, is, um, of course, um, Sarah, you are aware, and anybody else who was tuned in a couple of weeks ago knows that I did a full presentation on Tobago, which um, we can share afterwards. This, this presentation is just a short, um, it's about, it's a, it's a short presentation. It's a more, a more a taster than a, a full on presentation. So we will share the link to the full presentation um, post this, uh, this event. Um, so just to begin. Um, the first question, the first query always is where is Tobago? Now Tobago is at, I hope, can you all see this? Is it trans, can you see this? Yep, okay, it's right at the very bottom of the crest of Caribbean islands. And obviously we are the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago, but obviously my focus is just on Tobago for today. Um, we actually sit underneath the hurricane belt so we don't get troubled by those on an annual basis but obviously you know we are all fully aware that they are acts of god so um this isn't a boast or anything like that it's just a, a question of where we are geographically um and also another benefit of our location is um, the influence that uh, venezuela or south america has on the island now i'm going to continue on a little bit and give you a little bit more information about that just around here is the orinoco the river orinoco outflow now that comes out um, and brings nutrients from South America up engulfing Trinidad and then going on engulfing Tobago, feeding the coral systems that we have there, meaning that we have incredibly vibrant, colorful, amazing corals. Now with this presentation, I haven't gone, I haven't included those sort of slides to show you those imagery, but again, if uh, Sarah reminds me, I do actually have a small, a short 15 second clip, um, which I will include on that, uh, on the uh, follow-up email so you guys can actually see um, some of the stunning, amazing coral systems. So yes, fantastic diving all around Tobago because of our location. Another benefit um, uh, is uh, the, the bird life. We are blessed with um, six different species of hummingbirds. There's over 230 different species of birds, nesting birds in Tobago alone, with approximately 30 to 40 that visit on an annual basis. So incredibly, for a, such a small little island that we are, we are um, in, inundated with uh, an abundance of, uh, of bird life. Very colourful, very, very vibrant. And these, these two reasons, these two benefits are because of our location, so close to South America. So I hope that all kind of makes sense. Getting to the island, very easy. At the moment, there is British Airways and Virgin at both fly direct from London Gatwick. Um, when the uh, services resume, they'll be both be flying via Antigua. Um, and uh, yeah, we both offer twice a week. Uh, the Virgin service does go down to once a week over the summer months, um, but for the rest of the year, it's twice a week. So getting there, very, very easy. And at its closest point, the country-wise, 
Trinidad and Tobago is only seven miles away from Venezuela. So that goes to show you the, the geography um, of our islands. We're about 20 miles apart from, from, from the main island of Trinidad. As you can see, Little Tobago sits quite neatly um, above uh, Trinidad. So getting there, very, very easy. Now the island itself, we are only 25 miles by seven at its widest point. So not a humongously large island. Um, I, I mean, I, I will comment on the fact that um, my two predecessors were st showing you some stunning, amazingly beautiful, gorgeous beaches. Now we are blessed with, with um, amazing beaches um, similar to the ones shown. The main difference though, between what we have along this Southern Atlantic coast and across this, the Northern Caribbean coast is apart from one gorgeous beach down here, which is Pigeon Point, very, very famous. The rest of our beaches are all rainforest or forest, forest um, um, tinged or hint tinged. Um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I've lost the word. But they, they basically, the, the rainforest literally comes down to the beach level across, oh, this is surrounding the whole island. Okay, so that brings us on to the island itself. The main core of this island, very, very different to, to, to Anguilla. It is very mount, mountainous in the core. Um, we do have a UNESCO listed oldest protected rainforest in the Western Hemisphere, which a lot of people aren't aware of. And that's the main core of the island, the main ridge forest reserve. So very, very green, very, very lush. And as I've already pointed out, we've got gorgeous beaches over here, Kings Bay and up here in Speyside, all around this Northern Caribbean coast. And the rainforest, the forest itself, literally comes down to the um, edge of the beaches here. We have uh, um, a plethora of gorgeous, amazing dive sites around this area here and down in that Southern Western tip of the island also. Across this northern coast, um, we have gorgeous, beautiful, um, secluded beaches, go, um, untouched uh, and unspoilt um, uh, villages, peaceful, quiet, tranquil. Um, with, with regards to the key selling point of the island, they are unspoilt. If you have a client that wants a destination in the Caribbean that's green, that's lush, um, that isn't, we, we don't have a plethora of, uh, of five-star deluxe or singing and dancing hotels. That's not Tobago. What we do have um, is some beautiful three and four-star properties, predominantly down in this southern western area here. Um, so what that means is when you travel around the main core of the island and into the island, you will find small villages, small boutique uh, uh, three-star properties, three-star, four-star properties, um, bed and breakfast accommodation, small villa accommodation, um, all with an authentic Caribbean feel. Um, the island is very safe to travel around. Um, it isn't, there isn't a, 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 a huge amount of, of development. So when you travel around here, the small villages that you'll see, such as Palais Touvier here, such as Castara Bay here, such as um, Speyside over here, they are as they were 20, 30 years ago, unspoilt. Um, if you want to have a client who wants a, a, a green lush destination, which is authentic Caribbean, then Tobago is an option for you. Okay, and I hope that kind of makes sense um, to you. I'm not showing you lots of, lots of a variety of different images. I'm actually kind of focusing very much on the map to give you guys, a, a, try and give you guys a bit of a, a, a geographical idea of what the island has to say. Um, so yes, I mean, going back to what I said earlier, the majority of our accommodation, majority of our nightlife, restaurants um, is, are down in this southern western area here. Um, we do have um, experiences um, around the island itself, such as you can see, there's lots of waterfalls, the main, rain, main ridge rainforest where you can go trekking, bird witch watching, which is available all around the island. Um, all these things are own natural, all part and parcel of the island itself. Um, I've already spoken about the fantastic diving, um, which, uh, but of course, then that goes on and leads on to fantastic snorkeling. Um, one thing that uh, I, I, I continually <laughs> I have to mention is the fact that uh, uh, particularly along this stretch, this Caribbean stretch here, we have an abundance of um, turtle nesting areas. Um, so they come in every year from March all the way through to September, um, laying their eggs, 
um, with um, the eggs hatching, I think it's approximately six weeks later. So again, a major, a beautiful natural attraction that people are drawn to um, we're, we're, we're with regards to uh, um, coming to visit uh, Tobago. Um, so yes, uh, lots of beautiful, authentic and nature oriented experiences which are available. The island is very green, it's very authentic, and those are its key selling points. And that, that, is, that is it. I mean, I hope that kind of makes sense. Um, what I will do is I will show you the short video. I hope that the sound comes through because yes, these are gorgeous images, but one of the key things is, is you being able to hear what um, the people are actually saying. Um, so yes, I, I'll show you this quick video and then show you one more slide after that. And, and that is it. This is just a little bit of a taster. And as I said before, if you want the full um, detailed uh, focus on all the key selling points, the, the festivals, the carnivals, the food, the water, sports, activities, everything, then I have done a full um, presentation which we're, where I will share the link. We can share the link um, with you afterwards. All right, so I hope that all makes sense. And uh, I hope this, I, yes, there we go. Only when I go abroad and I see what is out there and I come back and I measure against what is here, there is no comparison to beauty. Some writings of our history, it is said that Christopher Columbus called it El Afona, meaning beautifully formed. Natural, beautiful, peaceful. <laughs> That's why I am here. <laughs> One of the fascinating things about nature, there's always something new. And especially in the tropics where there's such wide diversity, persons can experience and have the awe associated with some of the beaches we have, aquatic life we have, some of the fascinating birds we have within a day, within a short period of time. You have the Caribbean Sea on one side, you have the Atlantic Ocean on the other side. On our doorstep, a fringe reef that wraps around the entire area. You have this huge amount of biodiversity and uh, you know liveliness of the entire water that surrounds the island. To do bioluminescent nighttime tours, which are like uh, an escape into the deep, dark secrets of this, you know, glowing phenomenon. It's like this almost cosmic effect. It's just something to be seen. I know everybody in the village, <laughs> and everybody know me. That is the nice thing about here. To be go as used to the extended family. There was always a grandmother, aunt, or uncle. There was always love. We eat and we drink, we laugh, and everything together. To be go in one word to me, beautiful. Beautiful just It gives me great pleasure to be in Tobago and do what I do. The sunsets here are probably bar none, some of the nicest I've seen. I would describe Tobago as one of the clean, serene, and the best place that anyone could come. Be easy, be happy, and have a good time. There is nothing to compare to. This little dot called Tobago exists, and come visit. Excellent. Um, oops, no, we won't go through that <laughs> again. Um, excellent. Thank you very much for your time. Um, just a, a couple of little, uh, little extra points. Um, we do have uh, a, an online training program, which is uh, the Tobago Specialist 101. Um, we have a rewards program. So at the present moment in time, we do we are offering um, for every booking to Tobago, and I know this is, I mean, <laughs> something potentially for the future. And based on the uh, on the poll at the very beginning, we are really looking at uh, 2021 20, 
Um, but that's that's perfectly fine as long as you know when we, when we, this is a consideration for somebody who um, we are offering um, fifty pounds per booking to Tobago for every booking you make, and it's for the first hundred and one per people who who make reservations. So that's something to kind of focus on. Um, and you know, very shortly we will be, we'll be starting our own um, uh, sort of promotional program. Um, Again, with a, what a lot of destinations are doing is, is saying, look, things are hard at the present moment in time. We recognise things are difficult. And uh, this is something that we all need to, uh, the whole world needs to get through. Um, but at the present moment in time, what we'd like is for people to start dreaming of Tobago. So that's, that's a hashtag. And if you do have any personal questions or anything else that you want to talk about, um, just that's my email address there. So please contact me. Um, thank you very much for your time. I hope you enjoyed this. Um, and I pass back over to uh, to our host, Sarah. Thank you. Thank you very much, Stephen. Um, again, fantastic um, introduction into Tobago. Um, I note the kite surfing. I note the rainforests, um, the beautiful sort of the, the natural beaches. Um, yeah, again, it's just it's just a complete and utter contrast. It's something different. Um, so thank you so much for sharing that with us. Um, so we've got um, Carolyn, shall we give it a go on doing your prize, giving your prize away? Um, Stephen, if you can just let go of your sh uh, screen share so I can share mine. Oh. Oh, right. So one lucky person is going to win um, some champagne and chocolates. And then we have got quite a few questions um, to go through. Um, a, couple of, a few of them we may not be able to answer because they're about um, opening dates of the islands and the hotels but we'll get we'll you know we'll, we'll advise on what we know um okay so let me just okie okay, Okay, so the prize, can you all see that, is the um, choc champagne and chocolates. And I've put everybody's names into a, a spin the wheel at the moment. Um, now, if you're not here, you're not going to win it. Um, and also, there are a couple of um, tourist boards and supply, hotel suppliers, obviously. This is for, for travel agents, for tour operators. So if you're here and it calls your name, put your hand up and then we'll get the prize to you. Um, are you ready? Let's spin away. Claire Overend, are you on? If you are. <laughs> if you're here, put your hand up. Oh, um, I'm not sure she is. Oh, Claire. Yes, she's putting her hand up. She's here. Claire, you're the winner. Um, so what we'll do is we'll get that sent across to you. Um, okay, so Claire, what we're going to do is... Um, if you can drop me an email um, afterwards, um, or I'll drop you an email and then we can just arrange to get that shipped across to you. So thank you very much for that. Um, so thank you, Carolyn, for that wonderful prize. Um, okay, so in terms of the questions and answers, um, Chrissy has just mentioned it very interesting. Thank you. Um, um, we're actually live on Facebook at the moment. So if you go to mybookingrewards.com, um, onto the Facebook page, um, we're live, but yes, we will send it over for you. Um, I'll just need to download it and then get it, get it sent across. But we're there now, everybody can see us. So, you know, waving to everybody that's on Facebook live joining us as well. Um, Tina's just asked, um, oh, this is for Ian. Um, Ian, if you can um, take your, that's it, you mute off. Is the People People Scheme on all of the islands? It's on most of the islands. There's maybe like two or three that's not, but on the popular islands it is there. So, for example, like Nassau and Nassau, the, the Luthor, Exuma, Grand Bahama, Abacos, yeah. Perfect. Um, and also, um, how do we register for people to people? Is there is there a website we go to or? 
Yeah, it's Bahamas.com. And then just search in the top there, people to people, and they'll have the registration forms there for you. Brilliant, brilliant. Uh, Chris has asked as well, do we need to book people to people before the departure or can they do it when they're there? Uh, it's recommended to book beforehand just to have enough time to fit you with the right person. Um, it might be possible whilst you're there to book it, but I recommend beforehand. Yeah, okay, perfect. Um, and Tina has asked a question. Um, I'm presuming this is going to be for majority um, of places. Um, she's just put, um, did the hotels have wedding organisers to help set up a wedding and help with the licence? Um, so this, this, yeah, this, to be honest, is going to go out to all of you because I don't know weddings from the UK destination. Weddings are very, very popular at the moment. So Ian, um, I presume as per normal, they're going to have wedding coordinators at the hotels. Yeah. Um, you're going to have, yep, perfect. Carolyn? Same for you. Yeah, definitely. Uh, all the hotels have um, wedding planners, and there's also independent companies on island. Um, there's probably about four or five that specialise in weddings as well. Um, and like anywhere in the country, you know, you can get anything you want. You know, so they will coordinate the whole lot for them. Yeah. Perfect. And Stephen, same. Yes, absolutely. We've got, a, as I said, um, we don't have many, as I said, uh, five star property, but uh, definitely the properties that we do have, um, they do have wedding coordinators and they can arrange weddings on the beach, uh, weddings in the sea, weddings in the rainforest, uh, weddings practically anywhere. Um, so, uh, and what, you know, uh, whatever people want, and if they want something that's very unusual, very different, um, because of our location, you can do things in waterfalls up on the tree lodge type accommodation, just, you know, whatever you can imagine, the wedding coordinators can arrange it. Brilliant. And also, is there a requirement um, on how many days before you have to be there before the wedding can take place? So again, Stephen, if I can ask you that first thing as you're on. Next day. Next day, perfect. Yeah. Carolyn? And we have 48 hours at this stage. 48 hours and? To, have, to lodge your papers with the town hall, et cetera. So. Yeah, two days. Two working days. Yeah. And Ian? Uh, 24 hours. Perfect. Brilliant. Wow. Great, great destinations to get married in then. <laughs> um, so thank you for that one. Um, Chrissy, um, we've just answered that for Anguilla. So Chrissy just asked about how many days you have to be in Anguilla to get married. So we've answered that already. Um, Hannah, um, we, she's, all, she's just asked, um, I've completed the Tobago training course and the course on Nassau Paradise Island. Um, are there any other training courses, preferably for UK agents, that cover more of the Bahamas? Um, I know you've, covered, you've written back, Ian, but could you just tell everybody again what the link is? You, you're on mute at the moment, so you'll have to unmute yourself. Yeah, so it's uh, Bahamac, which is B-A-H-A-M-A-C dot co dot UK. As for the whole Bahamas. Perfect. So that's for the training course, everybody. So thank you for that one. Um, and Carolyn, do you have a training program? So we use the Travel Uni program. Okay, yeah. perfect. So oh, yes. in the middle of, actually, I'm updating it at this stage as I have some more time to do so. So yeah, we'll be updating it and putting more information on there as well. Perfect. Okay, so that answers that one. So thank you for that one. Um, and then we've got um, this, this question and um, we may not be able to answer. Um, it's about when are most of the hotels projecting to reopen um, the question for all the islands. I know some of some hotels have said, oh, we're going to be open on the 15th of May. But I, I know um, with everything at the moment, it's all pending um, what's going to happen when the governments and everybody say that it's, it's OK to open. Um, have you guys had anything through in terms of when you're going to be opening? I, I mean, obviously, living where I do, I know that it's probably going to be a we're not sure at the moment so if that's the case no worries um it's just a question that's been asked so carolyn do you want to start um at the moment no we don't have any idea i mean we are on lockdown on the island all the borders are, are completely closed ports of entry um everybody is very much on the same situation or they're out they're allowed out sort of an hour and a half a day um there is possible talk of extending that. And we've been quite fortunate, we've only had three cases, um, you know, so we're very lucky. But um, I, I really can't give a time 
and film that. As I said, we're we're hearing things every day. We're being updated yeah. every day. Um, we do have a, a dedicated website towards COVID-19 as well on the island, which is providing information. But at the moment, um, I don't know. I really don't know. That's fine. Um, Ian and Stephen, is it exactly the same for you guys that we're just waiting to hear and we're just waiting for the governments to sort of advise when, when we can? Um, yeah, okay. Pretty much, that's, yes. That's for today, I would imagine, yes. Yeah, perfect. No, I mean, I think this is pretty standard across the board, to be honest. Um, it's certainly the same here where I am. So, yeah, no, that's fine. Um, so, yeah, unfortunately, Jessica can't answer that fully, um, but we hope we've answered it as the best we can for you. Um, Vishnu has asked, um, this is a Stephen for you, uh, a Stephen for you, a question for you, Stephen. Is it easy to get around the island of Tobago? Yes, very easy. Um, you can either get a hire car, um, which I did. I went, to, uh, I had a little trip uh, there at the end of last year with my son. We literally just had a, we just had a car, just got a little Jeep. Uh, it cost about 250 quid for a week, um, all in. Um, and yeah, it's easy to drive on the left. Um, it's not... It's not super busy unless you're down in that southern western area, um, traffic wise. And, and of course, if you don't travel during the rush hour time, eh, nowhere is really busy in Tobago. Um, so, yeah, very, very easy to get around, very safe. Um, yeah, yeah. And um, the alternative is if you obviously don't want to hire a car, we do have bus services um, uh, and, you know, which, which you know, uh, circumnavigate the whole island. But uh, they are probably, I mean, generally speaking, about one an hour. Um, so, you know, they're not the most frequent in service. Um, and then an alternative is obviously if the majority of your guests or clients are staying in that southern western area, um, just get in an excursion with uh, one of the local uh, DMCs. They'll, they'll take you from point A to point B to point C to point D, then back to point A again very, very, very easily. And yeah, easy, it's easy to get around, basically. Perfect. Um, Ian, this one's for you. Tina's asked, um, I'm getting that the Bahamas are great for island hopping, shopping and beaches. Oh, and Gillet is amazing for reconnecting with yourself, relaxation and peace. And Tobago is amazing for connecting with the beauty and wildlife and making discovery. In a nutshell, is that it? Or do you have anything more to say? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a good starting point, island hopping. And then um, all the other individual activities of diving or fishing or sailing, uh, or just going around to different beaches, different little towns. So yeah, it's a good starting point. Perfect. And Carolyn and Stephen, do you have anything, anything extra? Could you, could you repeat my, my synopsis again? <laughs> yeah, you're uh, uh, for the beauty of wildlife and for making discoveries. That's, that's, pretty, that's pretty nice. It is, yes. It's a green, lush, um, very authentic. Um, we, we use that word authentic uh, a lot with regards to our marketing and how we promote the island because that's the truth. It is. It's, it's not very, it's not overdeveloped. We don't have any super 5,000 room hotels. In fact, we don't, <laughs> our largest hotel is 190 rooms, um, which, you know, some places might sound huge, but it isn't, it's pretty small. So it, yeah, it's, I like, I like that little synopsis, it's nice. But uh, let's add a bit of authenticity into that as well, and I'll be well happy. <laughs> that was mine again, relaxing. And, and yours have got amazing for reconnecting with yourself, relaxation and peace. Yeah, absolutely. But I also, you know, I always say with Anguilla, Anguilla, it's like one of these places you can do as little or as much as you like. Um, you know, if you want to keep busy and have an activity or something to do every day, you can. If you just want to, you know, really kick back and relax, it is the perfect destination. You know, it's not mass tourism, as I said before. It's very low key. Um, you'll never get, you know, hundreds of people on the beach or, you know, loads of traffic unless it's in the morning or at lunchtime or home time. Um, but it, it, it's, yeah, it's very laid back. So yeah, you can do as much as you want or as little as you want. Perfect. And we've got another question for you, Carolyn, as well from Emma. Um, yeah. Emma just asked, um, and Gula looks amazing. What board basis do clients usually book? Um, Most people, as I said before, we don't have all inclusive because the island has such fabulous dining options. Um, I actually put together a, a dining guide on the island and I call it affordable, reasonable and low the budget. So if you want to go and just have a great fish and a cold beer sitting on the beach, you can do that. If you want to go find dining, you can. So you'll find most people coming to Anguilla are very aware that we don't, we, you can buy meal plans. Most hotels, uh, resorts will offer breakfast um, as part of the rate. But most people on Anguilla, you know, they're out and about. They're out enjoying, you know, the food that the island has to offer. 
um, okay. for, for everybody. So really, there's no need to, that we don't have, um, you know, all inclusive. So meal plan, normally breakfast, then most people will eat up. Perfect. Um, and then, and then Emma's written it. Um, is it easier for dining locally, and can it be expensive? Um, so I presume this is going to depend on where, which restaurants you go to. Um, yeah, as I said, you know, you can go for a great piece of fish somewhere. There's lots, of, you know, some even our really like what we would call high end restaurants. One of them, Vaya, they do on a Wednesday night a five dollar crayfish night. So you know, you can still eat this great restaurant, but you're having incredible, affordable crayfish. We have a lot of barbecue places. We have small um, little local restaurants that are owned and run that are brilliant food and well priced. We have an area in the valley, which is the capital of the island, called the Strip, and there's great little places down there, from barbecue to a little Indian called Good Korma, to all sorts of little dining options down there that are very, very affordable. And we have great food trucks as well. So if people want to go and just pick up something at a food truck, it's 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 very good value. But if you want to go crazy, you can do that as well. <laughs> You like that? Um, and Stephen, this one's for you. Trisha's just asked, um, would you suggest doing a twin centre between Trinidad and Tobago? Um, you can do so. Um, very much as if you could do a twin centre with, with uh, any of the other islands um, where you can get flights to. Um, they are very, very different. Um, Trinidad is obviously considerably larger, um, is just as, is very green and lush in itself um, and has, you know, attractions um in itself um so yeah it, it, it is totally different it is a nice contrast um so yes uh, you, definitely i mean uh, just an example for, for uh, listening um obviously you guys are, are, are all aware of um of carnival of uh, the main carnival in the caribbean the trinidad carnival um which happens over um the, the february uh, weekend uh, in february um people from trinidad who go to carnival in trinidad they then go over to tobago what they call cool down so <laughs> there's a little mini carnival in tobago over that same weekend over that same couple of days um, but people go to tobago because it's just quieter it's a little bit more family orientated it's just a little bit it's just a lot more relaxing so yes it, it definitely works as a two center they are very very different um but so yes yes Perfect. And the last thing, it's not a question, uh, but it's from our, our Jenny Jackson. Um, she's just put here. Um, it's not a question, but just to say the restaurants in Anguilla are top class, but affordable and within a taxi ride or walking distance from hotels and villas, I highly recommend is a great destination for real foodies. So thank you, Jenny. For that. So that is the end. And um, we've had a lot of thank you um, sort of chats that have come through. So thank you very much for that. We're, we're glad that, um, you know, that it's a benefit for you to be able to come on to these these webinars um, and also just keep logging your Caribbean bookings um, on mycaribbeanrewards.co.uk so thank you very much thank you to the panels um, for your amazing sort of advice on the islands and um, we look forward to seeing all of your bookings so thank you very much and thank you, good thank, you. <laughs> thank you thank you everyone thank you everyone thank you very much take care bye, -bye. bye, -bye.